All right, so we're talking about the second derivative test, and this is a great way to figure out whether a turning point is a maximum, a minimum, or some other thing. In other words, it tells us the nature of a turning point. The best way to show you how this works is just to jump straight into an example, an example that's going to spit out two different stationary points. All right, so let's jump straight into it. We're going to find the stationary point of this function here. To find the stationary point, you find the derivative and let the derivative equal zero. So let's just jump straight into doing that. f dash of x equals um, 6x squared plus 6x minus 72. All right, that's pretty good so far. Now we let the derivative equal zero. Um, so zero equals 6x squared plus 6x minus 72. Now it's going to be easier if I factor the 6 out of this. like that, and divide by 6, 0 divided by 6 is still 0. So now I have 0 equals x squared plus x minus 12. And I can factorize x squared plus x minus 12, and I'll get x, x, uh, and it's probably going to be positive 4 and negative 3. And finally, therefore, x equals negative 4 or x equals positive 3 and what i have there are two stationary points but what i don't know is whether this one is a maximum or a minimum or some other thing and this one is a maximum or a minimum or some other thing so we're going to use our second derivative test so here's what we do for our second derivative we sub the x coordinate of a turning point into f dash dash x so First of all, we need to know what f dash dash x is. Uh, so f dash of x was that. So f dash dash of x is equal to 12x plus 6. All right, so now that we know that f dash dash x is equal to 12x plus 6, we'll perform our second derivative test on both of our turning points. And we're going to do it sort of at the same time. So let's do the um, first one. So f dash dash and sub in negative 4 that's going to be equal to 12 times negative 4 plus 6 save that for a minute and now I'm going to do the other one over here f dash dash x or f dash dash 3 I should say equals 12 times 3 plus 6 all right so now I can find out what those two answers are. Uh, so negative 48 plus 6 is negative 42. And 12 times 3 plus 6 is uh, 36 is positive 42. And while the number 42 is a very special number, that's not what matters. What really matters here is the signs. So a negative second derivative test less than zero, it tells you that's a local maximum. A positive second derivative test tells you it's a local minimum. Now, you might be thinking, wait a minute, this feels really familiar. It is very familiar. The second derivative test is just a test of concavity. It's just testing concavity. This is a video I made on concavity. You can say that f dash f of x is concave up so concave up looks like this which is a local minimum if f double dash x is greater than zero is greater than zero local minimum concave up a local minimum is concave up um, and then same here so a lot of people sort of look at the second derivative test and think that it's something special it's not it's just a specific case of a test of concavity it's testing concavity at a turning point all right so you might have been thinking well okay greater than zero less than zero what about if it's equal to zero well if it's equal to zero and it is possible you're going to have to do some more investigation you're going to have to do some other stuff to figure out whether it's a minimum a maximum or something else so the second derivative test this test of concavity it won't do everything for you if you do get an answer of zero here or here, 
you've still got a turning point. You just need to explore what that turning point is in another way. That's the second derivative test. It's just a specific concavity test.